here we have the final round of the 2022 Broke to Build contest. We have the 500, CR500 going up against going up against the CR125. This is just going to be crazy to see how this all pans out. But basically how this contest works, it is based on the biggest transformation. So back in November, all these guys got building on their bikes. And now here we are in May. And we're going through and checking out all the hard work and seeing how everyone stacks up. So we've narrowed it down. This is, I think, believe round four. So we've had three previous rounds. If you guys want to check those out, I will have them linked down below in the description. But we are on to the finals here. So what we're going, going to do tonight is the final matchup. And then we also have a third place matchup, which has four bikes in it. This is going to be also very interesting to see how this works out. So let's jump into it. We have a CR500 versus a CR125. Let's play the entry videos here. All right. We've got Mitch's CR500. Never get tired of seeing this thing. <laughs> Full bike. Dude, so much work went into that thing to make it look like it does now. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that after, just completely different bike, it looks like. Top to bottom, he touched everything on that. Yep. Cool parts on it too, with the pipe and a couple billet pieces. Sexy girl. So that's Mitch's 500 going up against Dustin CR 125. Which wasn't very broke. Yeah, it was your typical Craigslist bike, you know. Looked like it was uh, on its it's fair fair amount of track days and they, uh, they throw a polysport restyle kit on it and they're like ah it's worth four grand yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah man honda's been off the rails lately last couple of years that i love this choice of the bill's pipe and silencer though yeah, that's, that's cool. a good looking bike man i'd like to see a hugo on it though i want i like the drew cone pipes but that still is very nice again top to bottom this this bike was just gone through and really worked over as you can see in the final result there so looks like we don't have greg in here quite yet so we're going to start off before we get going i'm going to introduce the judges here we've got dave matt clint charles and rada say hi guys what's up how's everyone and doing Woo! the finals and we're just waiting on greg here so We've got uh, the majority of our team, but we're going to start out with Matt's pick in this final matchup. You got to pick a you got to pick a bike here. We got two CRs, so who you got? All right, I'll I'll start us off here. I mean, you guys have watched everything. You know how much we've you know praised these things and different things we've nitpicked. So we we don't have to go too far into that. Um, I'll just kind of quickly explain my decision. Um, my decision to pick my pick to be the winner uh, is strictly on, you know, creativity and thinking outside the box here. Um, and for that reason, my, my vote is going to go to Dustin Denver's CR 125 or 134. Um, I just think, you know, it might have not been as hard of a build to do from the standpoint of the availability of parts and all that other stuff. Obviously, Mitch's CR500, you know, to do something like that takes a ton of work. Uh, but I really like how Dustin stepped out the you know, outside the comfort zone and really went with a full build for this broke to built contest. So he is getting my vote. All right. Solid pick there. We're going to head to Charles. What are you thinking on this matchup? Man, it's, it's tough because they're so different, right? Um, I think they're both pretty fair in their start. They were, you know, both pretty complete, but both very dirty. Um, Dustin's bike is the bike that I, I would like to own. I'm not a huge, like, big bore CR500 or that style of bike kind of guy. Um, having said that, I'm still going to have to go with the 500, man. It just, when it comes down to those final touches, the 500 is absolutely impeccable. And like I said, I would rather own and have the CR125, but I cannot discredit the high level of like absolute perfection in the most finite details of the 500. So uh, the 500 is getting my vote tonight. All right. Good points there. We're going to head over to Dave. 
Who you got? Thank you. Again, both are so different. Mad respect for both of them. The the one that's going to win me over uh, is the CR500. The fact that in six months he could, I've built CR500s and it takes me like a year and a half. So the fact that he turned that into what it is in six months, I mean, it looks like a legit factory Honda race bike you know, from 87 with the Honda racing covers down to, you know, the black engine, the sweet, everything, the details on it are great. Um, so he's getting my pick and that's my final answer. All right. <laughs> yeah. For me on this one, it, it could have gone either way. Like these guys said, very different builds. And I feel like it almost comes down to your taste in what you like to see in a build. And I guess there was one bike that really caught my eye just slightly more than the other one. And it, it really, yeah, like I said, it just comes down to taste. Like you couldn't change. I personally wouldn't change anything on either of these bikes. I would love to own perhaps maybe not ride. They're too nice to ride, but no, no own either one of these bikes and the bike that really caught my eye just a little bit more. And just really grabbed my attention. If it makes sense, it like melted in my eye. It was that CR500. So I am gonna go with Mitch's CR500. That thing, just perfect restoration, added a couple cool parts onto it to really give it that extra bit without going too much on it. And I don't think there could have really been a better build out of an 80 CR500. So. I got to give it up to uh, to Mitch on that one. We're going up to 500. And Rado, what's your take on this? All right. So uh, I'm not going to speak a lot. I'll just give you. I'll just give you my uh, my pick. So for me, uh, it has to be this beautiful red two-stroke Honda CR. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I didn't, I didn't tell you the number, huh? Oh, you gotta you gotta say what what CC? <laughs> yeah, Just, you missed uh, the most important part there. I have to go with five hundred guys. That thing oh. is that thing is just just amazing. I love the bike. It's really good. All right. So yeah, it's hard to yeah. Um, looking at the scores here, we've got four for the five hundred and one for the one twenty five. We still have uh, two more guys here. Um, looks like Greg just popped in, so I apologize for being late, guys. <laughs> oh, there he is. oh, the worst! No uh, worries at all. Stuck in boogers out of Griffin's nose, and I'm like, oh, shit, the time. <laughs> uh, we, we made it. That to you. Yeah, yeah. Well, no worries. We had lots of lots of fun. You jumped in right at the right cool. time, so uh, we're gonna head to your pick. We've got Mitch's CR500 versus Dustin's CR125. <laughs> And we're itching to hear what you're what you're thinking on this one, Greg. Yeah, uh, he doesn't know the score. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you just said four to one, though. Oh, you heard yeah. it. Okay. Oh, yeah, I did. I did. I did. Yep. <laughs> oh. Well, I feel they're pretty even before videos. They were both complete bikes at you know the start of their teardowns and rebuilds. So it's hard to judge, you know, based on the beforehand for me. Um, ultimately, I think we've all heard me say it multiple times that the CR to me, that's the CR, they're both CRs. <laughs> We're all, are we all doing that? The CR 500 is just one that I see in a museum. It's, it's incredible the, how detailed that thing is to being complete, a complete 87 right off the showroom floor. I mean, that is what really gets me the most. I know that, uh, that Dustin and the CR125, they're just an immense amount of work with all the coatings and everything. Um, but Mitch's CR500, when it comes down to it at the end of the day, um, that is really the, the one bike that really just knocks my socks off and right from the beginning of the competition from the top 32 down um, I've just been in love with that bike um, completely different builds in terms of uh, you know going like an OEM replica look and just going completely custom 
I'm not always the biggest fan of going all out on the coatings. And that's probably another reason why I enjoy the CR 500 just for its simplistic, complete restoration. Yeah, that was a good, good take. And so that puts us at five to one, but we still have Clint left. So Clint, I was hoping this would come down to, uh, to your pick, but we've all, all we already got kind of a runaway going here. So uh, yeah, I know. Uh, I tell you what, uh, I'll pick the Honda. Okay, <laughs> how about that? Yeah, <laughs> doesn't matter. Good choice, I mean, man. Good choice. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, Ride let's, be, let's They're they're both so even in my eyes. Uh, this since we we finished the last round, right? And I I saw this coming, and I I suck as a judge. I, I between those two, uh, for what they are, they're incredible bikes. Um, I. Could totally see that CR 134 being in between the legs of Chase Sexton or, you know, one of the Lawrence brothers um, out of the track. And it would not surprise me at all uh, that it's just it's that good. Uh, the CR 500, I think Dave actually kind of tugged at my heartstrings a little bit last time when he was talking about it because he's right. Like I've also built a couple 500s on this and uh, on, on both my channel and over time. And it's it had been so much easier to get an 87 500, which let's be honest to one of the things that we haven't brought up yet is that 87 CR 500 motor. It's a very unique engine. Uh, that 86 was it 86, 87 Dave. That was the long rod or the short yes. rod motor. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And uh, so, I mean, that goes back to being a very, very difficult bike to find engine parts for. Um, and everything that, that Mitch sourced, it blows my mind. I said it early on in, in one of our other ones that he had to have known someone in the CR mafia to get some of those parts because they just, they're not around. Uh, that is a bike I'd totally imagine seeing at the Vintage Museum at Barber. Um, it, and they both deserve to be in the final two. If I have to pick, you guys are assholes and I pick Mitch's CR 500. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, that was a super good take, Clint, and you brought up some good points there. Like that 500 is just so unique, so it's uh, it's hard to go against that bike, and I think that's kind of the, the conclusion we ended up. Hey, I, I told you guys, I told you guys it would be a it would be a landslide and would, wouldn't come. I, I I knew where this was probably going. I knew I'd be the uh, the lone wolf here. So <laughs> oh, <laughs> saying we're old. We almost need some some young guys. Yeah. In maybe, maybe. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying anything. Hey, man. We need to get that bike on the Heroes and Legends Tour um, for Supercross and Motocross. No okay. kidding. It, it, and it would belong there, too, is the other thing. Yeah. It would absolutely belong there. 100%. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm pretty gonna... sure Rick Johnson took his shirt off when he saw it. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that, that wraps it up right there. So, yeah, we've got six versus one for the 500. So congratulations, Mitch. Congratulations, Mitch. Of the 2022 Broke to Belt. Pretty big accomplishment there. Man, it really, you had to work for this one, and you put in so much time over the last six months to get your bike to this, this spot, and uh, kudos to you. You earned it, man. And Dustin, again, it just came down to the smallest of margins here. It could have gone either way. And... Um, got to give props to you for putting in the work and making a very unique bike as well. So um, you got to leave the contest pretty happy with the bike you built. And with that, we're going to move on to our third place matchup here. We've got four bikes that ended up tying in the previous round. So we decided we're just going to huck them all into yep. one matchup here. And we're going to pick, these judges are going to pick one uh, bike out of here. And whoever gets the most vote comes away with third place. So. Let's uh, watch the videos of these matchups, the third place matchup. Yes. So Joel's KTM 250SX. The J-Man. Pretty corroded and crusty to start with. And that bike was pretty new too. I think it was a 14. 14, so right. Hammered it. Dude, yeah, quite the How do you let it get like that. Shit. Yeah, we've all all seen the details on this over the course of this contest, mm -hmm. and it's just it's hard to keep apart with these bikes. Just had it down to the the details on it. And the next bike 
and the third place running is Maxine. Maxine. <clears throat> Again, any four, any one of these four bikes could have ended up in the finals. They were just all so, so close. What's up with the brown number plates? <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> that root beer. Oh, yeah. That was my favorite part when it tipped over. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah. So, su super cool parts on this bike with the pipe and... I still Another love the graphics on that thing, man. I mean, you rarely see like, I mean, graphics can tie in a build, but you never really see anybody do something so unique, uh, you know, unique and kind of crazy with actually like bringing in the graphic as a, a, a feature. Hey Kim, how many bikes uh, entered the competition this year? I believe there were just under 200 entries. Oh boy, that's so, a lot. Great. That's so much work. Yeah, not everyone finished their build, of course. You know, some people ran out of time, but right. um, finished builds, there was, I'll have to count them out, count them, count them up. There's quite a few, actually. And so, I couldn't have done I mean, it, I'll tell you all that. These, all these guys that end up in the top 32, or, you know, now we're down to the the final, <laughs> basically. It's it's pretty pretty big deal. You're competing against a lot of really mm -hmm. quality builds here. Yeah. yeah. I think it's awesome. His visor looks amazing. And it sounds really good, too. It sounds really good. Yeah, it sounds like a like a newer YZ. Has that little wine to it. Yeah. yeah. And of course we've got Terry. Yeah, they use that they use that <laughs> cylinder design for about 10 years. The purple frame. <laughs> the Joker. The <laughs> Joker. I wonder if that's what Terry said when he picked it up. He's like, this thing's a Joker bike, huh? Oh, like some meth head on it. <laughs> Dude, he probably put out a Facebook ad that was like what's the worst bike you can find me in my yeah, that's what his instagram at. post he literally searched for the gnarliest looking bike on craigslist and facebook marketplace and came <laughs> no up way. yeah it's a good strategy <laughs> on purpose just for the competition that's awesome all right so those are the four bikes matching up for third place so we're just going to pick one out of these uh four bikes and we're going to start with dave <laughs> My pick is Joel's KTM. All right. And I, we've when we've talked about all these bikes so many times now, and I've got to stay consistent and true to what I really feel is the best bike transformation. I got to go with Joel's. They're all amazing. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the real answer. Cohesive. Go wrong with any of them. All right, Greg. What are you? What are you picking here? Uh, man, Maxime's bike, um, the YZ versus Dustin's CR was such a tough decision for me um, that I'm on the, uh, uh, now that the CR has kind of moved into that final second place position, now I'm all about uh, Maxime's YZ 125. Mm -hmm. All right. Beautiful. And then next up, we've got Rado. There's one bike that they all look amazing. There's one bike that has just enough of everything. Maybe some of those bikes have a little bit too much of something for my taste, but there's one bike that has just enough of everything, and that would be KTM 250SX. Joel, good job, man. All right, good pick there. Clint, what are you thinking? Thinking I need a counselor after this thing, dude. Yeah. <laughs> we all do. Oh, man. Should we all just stay on this afterwards and not record and just hug it out? This is yeah. <laughs> I was really we just did. too afraid to join the call. We just a little time for counseling yeah. i feel like i feel like if i don't pick one or the other cody emmert deserves to be in in third uh terry gaskell does maxine porton like right. they all deserve to be there and it just comes down to personal preference and that's what sucks because uh god guys um I, I'll go back to this. So we re-voted in Terry Gaskell's KX65, Matt and I, we, we saw eye to eye on that thing, I know. And um, just because of the broke to build aspect, how broke it was. And the only thing that even came that close, in my opinion, was Maxime Forden's uh, YZ125, as far as a brokenness level. Sure, Cody Emmerts was destroyed, but he had that thing all blown apart. Very hard to get parts for. A um, couple things I would have liked to seen different on Cody Emmert's YZ250 to really set that thing up. It, I feel a little unfair to say that a KX65 is easier to build than, say, Joel's uh, KTM or um, any of any of the, of the qualifying bikes here. Um, it's the the KX65 
if I had to say it deserves a fourth place, I know that's not a thing really, but the the third place, I, I, I'm going to have to see, say Maxim Fordens, YZ125, only because that was the matchup, right? Like in the first pick that went CR134 versus uh, Maxim's bike. And we're just like, oh my God, like those bikes are so equal. Um, I'm going to have to say Maxim. Yeah. Final answer. Stamped it. All right. <laughs> I wasn't sure what you were going to say, man. All right. Yeah, <laughs> I, I wasn't either. We're all over. Yeah, it. I was on the edge of my seat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, Charles. Who you got? Well, Dave said it best already, man. Keeping keeping cohesive with uh, prior rounds of this contest. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Max's 125. It's just got a few super tiny little details that uh, that are there, and it it was tough because I thought about Joel's bike a lot. Uh, kind of went back and forth, bobbled a little bit. And, you know, at the end of the day, that kind of, it's kind of like going back on my word in, in a way. Uh, they're both so great, but uh, it'll come down to those two little items I listed in the last video. I think it was the, one of the head stay bolts and the, and the petcock. So uh, otherwise, man, they're very hard to judge. So I got to go with the nitty gritty stuff and, and pick the, the one, two, five. Yeah, hundred percent. And I, I feel like out of these four bikes, there was something that just a little bit of margin that made the difference for me and someone that just went outside the box and had a little creativity there. And that was with Max's YZ 125. I feel like that just really, again, grabbed my attention. And that was a bike I had voted with throughout the whole contest. So like you guys said, you got to stick with your initial feeling on that bike. And from the get go, I'm like, this thing should be in the semifinals or the finals. Like that is just a wicked build. And so that's who I'm going with is Maxime's YZ125. And <clears throat> up it off, we've got Matt. Oh boy. I'm, uh, I'm bringing her home here. Should, should we right. list the scores real quick? What, what's the score? What's the score? Yeah, yeah what's, right. what do we got? Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four. And I already us. have my pick. I already have my pick. So this is not going to influence at all, at all. So it won't, it won't influence third place at all. So we've got uh, four for Max and two for Joel. And we've also got the other, other two bikes in the running as well. So uh, what's your take on this, Matt? All right. So Cody's YZ250 is the best budget build, in my opinion. He kept everything and tried to restore as much as he could. So personally, I think he you know, wins the best budget. Um, Terry's out of these four is the, the brokest. So he did the biggest you know, kind of broke to, to built transformation. And then you have Joel and Maxime's, you know, bikes, which are absolutely phenomenal. Um, my vote for this is, uh, is going to be for Joel's KTM. And the reason being, uh, I've never seen that charcoal color that he did. You know, you see the black, you see the black frame, the black swing arm and everything that Maxime did, which is awesome, but you've seen it before. I've never seen the way and the colors that Joel did with his bike. And for that reason, he's getting my pick. All yeah, right. it's called, uh, that was Cobalt Cerakote. And I think he said an ultra black chrome mainframe, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's awesome. It's, I've, it's so unique. I've, n I've not yeah. seen that. I love it. Yeah, so it was, yeah, that was a, both unique bikes here. And uh, let's look at the scores. So we've got one, two, three for Joel and four for Max. And so that gives third place to Maxime's YZ125. Congratulations, Maxime. You did an incredible job right. on that bike and you earned it just like all the other bikes in here. And fourth place is Joel. So that, uh, uh, that wraps up our top yeah. four. And thanks to all these guys, uh, you pitched in extra money and that went to the, the top, top builds here. So um, I believe we had decided on the top three gets the extra, extra winning. So you guys are walking home with a little fatter wallet. Yeah. And, that's awesome. And then for fifth and sixth, um, it was the KX65 of Terry and um, Cody's YZ250. So the payout isn't any different on those. I mean, we could, we could sit here and try to hash it out who gets fifth and who gets sixth if you guys want no. to. Well, no, no. But yeah, basically that that wraps it up. We've got a winner. We've got second, third, fourth, and all the way down the line figured out. So that was Congrats. Uh, pretty exciting. Hey, Congrats, guys. Yeah. What was the cool. what was the pot, the payout? I, I actually don't know. 
So the payout for first place initially was $1,000 cash in a $500 Rocky Mountain gift really? card. Wow, that's actually really good. It's really, yeah, it's really good. It's pretty that's solid. awesome. Yeah, I, I really made it top heavy this year. So these guys are walking home with some good cash. And second place, I believe, I'll have to look at the website, but it's somewhere around $500 cash mm -hmm. and a $300 Rocky Mountain gift card. And then uh, third is two or $300 cash. So and yeah, that's really good, fun. man. So it's it's pretty solid. And first place, of course, making a badass trophy for them, similar to last year's, but it's a little little step up. So, Mitch, how can how can you step up this? These things are awesome, yeah. Jam. Oh my god, I can't wait to see what that uh that this, this year. Did make those? Yeah, I did last year. What's that? Didn't Luke make those last year? Yeah, I actually made made them here at the shop and then sent them to uh, Luke, and he did the laser oh, yeah. etching. So, yep. Luke, uh, uh, fat head Luke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So similar deal this year. I'm just uh, shining them up, get them all shaped up here, and, and then I'll ship them off to uh, laser etching. So yeah, Mitch, you're gonna walk home with this with this trophy here. And can I uh, say very, something very about can I say something about Mitch real quick? So last. Yeah. What was it? Day before yesterday, I saw the Instagram post from, I think, a friend of his or someone involved in the build saying you can hear it run now, finally. And yeah. so Mitch heard our last video and uh, he heard us loud and clear, you know, showed him filling up it with oil and cooling and mixing the gas. It was so good and put a leg to it, took some kicks, but they all do their 500s. They're, they're not easy to start, but I mean, that thing sounded so good. It sounded as good as it looked. That had a lot to do with my decision today. So well done on that, uh, yep. dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was that was tough. I'll tell you what. I, I really I really wish I would have seen Dustin's CR run. We never saw a video, and I was like, dang it. Uh, we saw. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Well, and, uh, did you guys also let me, see? Let me go let ahead, Rado. Yeah, I just want to say a couple of words. Uh, I'm really impressed how uh, Cam did all this. Uh, you know, brought yes. to build contest from the beginning till the end. It is a yeah. lot of work. It's a lot of logistics, a lot of hours, uh, a lot of everything, putting stuff together, video editing, and it's just incredible. And I really appreciate that, Cam. Uh, it's uh, great that you're doing this for the community. I think a lot of guys, they had an amazing time, uh, you know, doing the contest, building the bikes. And uh, yeah, just want to say thank you. And thanks for inviting me and uh, other judges. Right. It was a yeah, pleasure yeah, to be part of it. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you, Cam. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that, guys. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for saying that, Rado. Yeah. 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 It probably goes better. a lot, a lot further than that too. Like you think it's hard, and you might have an idea, but it's it's probably about 10, 15 times harder than that. Yeah. To raise all of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's. I mean, it's and all, there was what, two hundred entries. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of time going through it, but I mean, I was very happy to to go through it and set it all up this year again, and um, it this was the most fun year out of the, the three years just having all you guys on here and we get to talk shit and look at some cool bikes and it's that's been yeah. the coolest aspect of it so all the hard work and all the time invested has, has been well worth it and looking yeah, to yep. ramp yep. it up even more for next year so moving on to next year i do have some ideas here um i'm gonna sit down and kind of go through all the uh all this all the notes from this year and put together a better package for for next year and um, I think it's going to end up working out really cool. So I'll have some info on that pretty soon here. I'm sure within the next few weeks and all you guys watching that are wanting to enter in the next years and have a blast with all of us guys. Um, I will have the link to that contest page. You can like basically pre sign up, like have a just punch in your email address and you'll get an email as soon as the contest goes live and it'll start either in November or October later this year. So I'm kind of contemplating extending the six months to seven months, give this, these guys a little bit more time. But mm -hmm. I also feel like the six months is, it's a challenge in itself to build a, a bike, a legit bike in six months. It's a, it's a huge undertaking. And I want to leave that aspect into it. So I got to do some more thinking on that. But um, yeah. So I got lots of uh, ideas, Dave. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> criteria, like the, the one thing that, for my opinion, was, man, where's the buildup of these bikes? 
And I wonder if there could be like even yeah. more criteria into this seven months, maybe extending it seven months. They've got a little more time with, with editing and showing the world, hey, this is what it was. I had to go here to do this and that, and then just build value in their build that way too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe always a one minute video or something just to keep yeah. it. Yeah. 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 That and, that and make it a four month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make yeah. make it, Ken. I think you should make it a requirement that everybody who's building a bike should buy a tripod. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You don't like the shaky videos that go in and out of focus? <laughs> no, I mean they can they can film themselves working on a bike and it just it just be a little better. Like all videos I do, it's just one man show, so everything is on a tripod. Yes. Yeah. So you can do a lot of stuff with a tripod. So much. You guys brought up some good points, actually. Um, I think a, a one minute entry and uh, or before and after video is, is pretty short. It's really tough to jam all that info and all the details just in that one minute. Yeah. And so I think for, I could somehow incorporate a little bit more or the backstory with some of these bikes into like the during video. And yeah. so only reason why we were doing the before during the during video was so that way we could kind of check to make sure people are actually building a bike and they're not just, you know, pulling some slick move here. So that was the purpose of the before video, video but maybe I could somehow incorporate it into say, all right, guys, maybe tell a little backstory with this biker, how the build went or um, some of the challenges you faced along the way. I think that would add some value to the contest and um, really bring out a storyline because that's something we're kind of missing here too is what a, what about like a 30 like every three weeks or something they do like a little 30 second spill hey this is what i've got coming this is what i got done this week this is what, just from the selfish perspective like man i want to really dive into each one of these individually and from like a judge's perspective give people more of a, a fair shot and from, yeah. from by the time we see the bikes, you know, it's not that bad. So I kind of agree with that, Dave, like every three weeks, whatever, keep it short and sweet 30 seconds. But um, like if the during videos become like five or 10 minutes, I mean, that's a lot of work for Cam at the start right. of the project, right. you know? Yeah, you so know what? You could do? I like the 30 second idea. You could probably even give everyone an objective. And I'm just going to spitball something because it'll get everyone's brains going. But what if you had the six months, right? You have months one through six where the six month objective is the bike's completion uh the fifth month's objective is to get it running for example the third month's objective is um you know the frame is going back together whatever then guys have an objective to shoot for where in that 30 second video there's a specific criteria we could even keep score on that all the way through and have the winner be a mystery based off those points they earn all the way through to the six months and then you're kind of not sifting through videos every video would be in regards to the bike running for the first time or bikes running bikes the, running yeah mm -hmm. like you give, you give milestones and objectives so that they're they're very clear for each one of those extra videos maybe they're 30 seconds but you know you could you could tally scores on those as you go through like say you had the final 32 and then uh and i guess that doesn't really work because it's going through the whole thing maybe if it was randomized like the whole way through I don't know how you get the group of guys that would be like in the running for those six month objectives, but I'm kind of just, yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I get what you're saying, but I think, I think the issue with that is, I mean, if you want to get as many entries, if you want people, you know, this expanding and really, you know, people diving into this, you know, really good video productions and having everything three weeks and having different objectives throughout the stuff, yeah. you know, I mean, that's, it's a lot of work for people. And, you know, it's personally for me, a lot of these builds, I guarantee, I guarantee over half of these people didn't start their builds until there was 30 days left because people are just inherently lazy. You know, I mean, that's just human nature. You're busy, you're doing other things. So like, I feel like that'd be a very difficult thing for a lot of people to be doing True. these specific timelines. If you, if you guys get what I'm saying. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. There's yeah, and I guess, camera work is not easy either. Yeah. So uh, that's a big barrier for people, you know, 
For sure. So maybe descriptions, maybe uh, include, be like, hey, um, it's not required, but, you know, please include in your descriptions of your videos some really detailed stuff, some hardships, different things you went through. That way you can, you know, show your story and tell your story some more. You know, something that isn't, you know, people might suck speaking in front of the camera and they might not be able to get out exactly what they've been doing, but they can do it over text better. I still yeah, do. That makes sense. Maybe it could still have an objective. You know, there's more content, like Dave said, uh, and it's not. Yeah, for sure. Better. But something specific still so that judging wise, it's it's easy, but also doesn't limit the barrier to entry, like you said. So the contest can continue to expand like it should, you know. Yeah, I, I think what I could do is um, add in some of these elements into the during video. And that can just be, you know, up to three, four minutes long, perhaps. And people could really tell a story there. And but it's still obviously going to be based or judged off of before and after. It'd just be nice to have a little bit more context with these bikes. So I think right. I'm going to adjust things with the, the during video and allow people to, if they want to, to share, you know, some of the story. And, you know, the, when it boils down to it, the more work you put in, the better the result you're going to get. And that goes with the, yeah. before, during about, and after videos. Um, how about you, you ask them to do one video just explaining why they picked the bike what's the backstory and what's the plan with the bike and, and all that yeah. just them talking about yeah. it there you go. <clears throat> yeah yeah that could that could be a good idea um, yeah and it could be optional too because i think all of us could could uh understand this like it's not always easy to talk in front of the camera and like get your point across like even i struggle with that many times and um so it might be tough for some of these guys to do it so we can make it make it optional of course Right. Yeah, it's true. It's a good point. Yeah, you get more yeah. content, but it's it's optional. And if it's just one more video, most people will probably do it because it will totally go towards uh, how they're being judged, most likely. Yeah. What if, uh, Cam, this this is uh, you're going to hate this because this is <laughs> sounds like more work for you. But what if you came up with some sort of template or some sort of sheet that people fill out when they sign up for the competition that includes, you know, the year of the bike, you know, what condition out of 10 it was in, you know, where that came from, a little story. You had all these little separate categories where people would just fill out the information and that would almost tell the story about the bike. I don't know if that would kind of make sense to you guys. Yeah, yeah, it awesome. does remind things. Yeah. yeah, there's always a way to make it all fit for sure. But that's that's a whole, whole lot of cams over there going. That's way too much work. <laughs> oh. I'm he he, he slowly there. starts yeah. disappearing. He's like, yeah, yeah. yeah you know. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. For, for next year, I think, I think for the next year, you should fly the judges out for like one week retreat. And we do all the judging. Yeah. And then we yeah. ride. We ride all together. We yeah. judge. We hand, yeah. Count yeah. me in. Uh, yeah. I imagine the sun. Charles will get a big house soon, so I will take Idaho. Yeah. yeah. The other guys. <laughs> yeah. The other guys will vouch for. We were actually we were actually just talking about that, um, and that was something I I wanted to like keep on the back burner just a, as an idea, and uh, but I guess the the idea is already out there, so that's that's something I was I was considering doing. And get everyone get everyone out here and um, do a bunch of riding and hanging out. And I think it would be be a lot more um, be a lot less of a time commitment on my part and all of you guys too. We could just knock the tournament out in one or two days. Make it yeah. structure it somewhat similar to Red Bull Straight Rhythm, to where you have qualifying one day and then the whole tournament the next day. That way it's easy to follow. You can see okay, this is round one, round two, round three, so on and so forth. And we could. I feel like in person, it's always Girl, two strokes and <laughs> over zoom. It's always, it's not quite as easy to like, um, I guess, get a, your point across and um, really, I, I feel like it would just be easier to follow in person. So if we had everyone here, that would be, that would be pretty, pretty wicked. So that's something I'm definitely considering and going to try to try to make it happen. But, um, and then also I want to import someone as a judge that was a previous contestant, just like Matt and Greg. And so um, I'm gonna do some, some thinking on that and see uh, which, which person would be a good fit and reach out to some people. So I think that'd be a, that's always a cool perspective like hearing from Greg and Matt, like they were a part of it. And so they, they understand the, the work that goes into it, you know, in a six month period. So I think that's, that's some, an element I wanna keep every year is bring a new judge in that was part of the, the tournament, so. Yeah, that's, that's kind of where I'm at. Cool, but yeah. So, um, 
that's going to wrap up the 2022 Broke to Build. Good job, Cam. Good job, everybody. Everyone that's to be part of it. Thank yeah. you, Cam. Yeah, this was Thank so you, much man. fun. I, I appreciate cool. the, uh, the invite. Yeah, yep. absolutely. It's pretty cool, man. And it was, it was nice that. meeting. It was nice meeting all of you guys too. I see you guys on YouTube or Instagram, but it's like, Likewise. it's cool getting to talk and, you know, you know, get to know you guys. It is, it, I, yeah. you don't understand how much I want to ride with all you guys. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's definitely good for sure. We, we, we can definitely, I feel like we can put that together, you know, we'll, we can stay off stream and, and kind of put something like that together, but that'd be, I, I mean, I'd be so down for that. I, I love that kind of connection. I mean, shit, I even met with Charles for, of all the YouTubers. I picked Charles, right? So I went, I know, what an idiot. <laughs> he put me in his trailer overnight. So God found out. Yeah, that's that's because you guys ride Chinese bikes. Yeah, right. hey, <laughs> Rado, you just need a taste of Kool-Aid, bud. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for COVID oh, guys. <clears throat> yeah. So, I want all you guys watching to check out these guys' channels or Instagram pages. I will have them linked all <laughs> down below in the description. Once again, they donated a lot of their, their time and expertise towards this, this contest. And it was a huge deal having them a part of it. And it really solidified just what this, this contest is all about. And all these guys build bikes, they understand what goes into it. So it was a pretty big deal having all of all these guys together on the same panel. And uh, I'm just I'm just here for the party. So been a been a hell of a ride and we are going to sign it off for this year and we'll see all of you guys in the 2023 tournament Woo. be some wrenches in the fire for sure we've got uh, a lot of thinking to do and uh, yeah. once again the hype is real there's been a ton of people already saying they're they're so pumped up for 2023 and they're already looking for bikes yeah yeah, yeah. Well, i got a handful of people that didn't know about it I'm like oh my gosh yeah. dude this is yeah. the coolest thing ever i'm doing it it's wild how many people still don't know yeah, so we gotta get the word 30. out. Yeah. Steam yeah. is building. Steam's yeah. definitely building, and it's I like it. How is there... it's, uh, just grown organically every year. You know, it's yeah. not had a huge jump in in entries for a single year. It's just slowly growing, and I want to keep it keep it that way because it it's uh it really brings in the, the hardcore guys and all these guys that that finish their bikes. You guys um, deserve some some serious props and absolutely. Um, and is so, there any better form of therapy? Yeah, than yeah. on a dirt yeah. bike. Yeah. One hundred percent. That is the right. truth. <laughs> yeah, and the, the the amount of reward you get as you are putting the bike together. I mean, yes. that that alone is is your is your price for everything. Right. Like, exactly. Yeah, you get it. that right on it, Rado. I mean, when you step back and you like get like right before you put the plastics on or like a piece, and you stand back and you're like, yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah, exactly. What's even more awesome is you roll up to the track and people just flock to your bike. Yeah, so unique and just rad. So that's you awesome with the whole stable. That was probably fun. All four bikes, all ready to go. Dude, that was a lot. That's a lot of work. You don't realize how like when you ride all four bikes, then you got to go home and wash all four bikes, or you, you just got to get a trailer to trailer all four bikes. <laughs> it's right. Something that I didn't even think of doing the project. Like, oh yeah. shit! Like, I got to figure out how to move these bikes even. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, well, hey Greg, I found a pro circuit sticker for you. I'll send to you. Oh, sweet. One of the old school ones? I had one left. Found Dude, it. You are the man. All right. Shoot me your address. You just Sounds gave good. away your the, the bike pick that you bought. Oh, well, everybody's wallets on this project, uh, this Broke to Build project are getting thicker. My wallet just got real thin today. So that announce, <laughs> bike announcement will be coming out soon. Very good. Hey, who bought your YZ? That'll be coming out soon, too. I can't. Uh, <laughs> He's three weeks back on content on Instagram, so I can't, I can't um, dive into what it is before he does. So you, you kind of just let a little bit of a clue out there, though. I'll say yeah. that. <laughs> what a wicked a question web for you guys. We... How much, how much behind is uh, is your YouTube uh, reality behind your life behind the real time? How much behind is it? Is it two weeks, three weeks? Like when you just when you buy a bike, how long does it take to you to bring it on the on the YouTube? Dude, I'm like a day or two. I'm like, when you I are? Project, like, you, man. like straight up, like this one I just picked up like two days ago and she's a peach. And I just, <laughs> I just launched the video yesterday or something like that. Like I was, I was so amped to get it out there. I'm like, no, 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 this needs to go out right now. You know? Yeah. Dude, that's yeah, impressive. Get I swear I'm today, months, uh, I swear I'm months behind. Yeah. I'm like a couple of weeks, three weeks, maybe. Yeah. I'm like yeah. three, four or five. Sometimes I got some videos that are honestly like, five months back that i haven't done uh, Same. i'm still working on a video from last year so yeah 
explains yeah, it. Yeah, Cam, when is that <laughs> RM250 coming out? Let's see that thing, dude. <laughs> yeah, that thing's like three years in the making, so it better be it better be something <laughs> cool. But I drag my feet so much on these builds, but people, I don't know, I don't know why they still watch them. It must be yeah. okay. <laughs> They love Ginger Man. That's what it is. It's a Ricky uh, Carmichael thing, a Ryan Bill um, thing, and a Cameron Damiello thing. So, yeah, we get it. I'm glad, yeah. too. <laughs> I got the ginger privilege, I guess. Works yeah. Hey, Cam, real quick. Uh, how, do you, how do you pronounce your last name? I want the official pronunciation. Nimala. 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 Yep. Oh, uh, I've been saying it I feel so like you're, I feel like you're pronouncing it. I've been saying Nimala. <laughs> Nimala. 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 Yep. It sounds, Nimala. sounds right. finished. Are you it's finished, yep. Grandparents, okay. parents came from from Finland, so straight mm -hmm. out of uh, Scandinavia. I'm I'm white as they come. <laughs> you're, a, you're a Viking. I, I apologize about the <laughs> uh, All right, guys. Well, thanks again for being a big part of this, and it was a ton of fun putting this together this year. And I'm more excited for for next year. So, yeah, um, like we're gonna we're gonna sign it off here. And um, once again, all you guys watching, go check out these guys' channels. I'll have a link down below, and. Uh, you're going to be in for a treat for next year. So we will see you guys there. Have a good All one. All right, everybody. It's been real. Thanks, Thanks guys. guys. Yeah. Later. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you guys. Thanks, Cam. Yeah. Yep. Thanks, Cam. Thank you. All right. Have a good well, one. Sex, sexy later, buddy. Yo. Ooh. <laughs>